Citizens of the internet, as they are now called, netizens, have expanded the reach, conversation, and interaction through these two platforms. Through what Bank now defines as the network and public sphere. And precisely because of that, the conversations and this boundless nation of young people, more often than not young people, have taken on in political conversations. And it's not something that is also, um, just limited, so to speak, in other parts of the world, but we have seen the impact within Sub-Saharan Africa. Roots must fall in, Southern, in South Africa, um, the fix this country in Ghana, and more recently, the ANSAS protests in Nigeria. Digital youth and social movement does not explore the influence of um, digital media and youth movements. Rather, it tells the story of how digital media propelled three significant um, youth movements within the Nigerian context. And it's very important to state this because the young people who we are studied from occupying Nigerian protests of 2012 um, answers of 2020 and obedient movement of 2023 are digital natives. For them, digital media is their media. They did not transition like most digital migrants did from use of analog and uh, mass media or mainstream into digital technologies. They were born within this technology and for them is their home. And precisely because of that, you could really see the significant mileage that they were able to achieve. Take Occupy Nigerian protests, for instance. Um, in as much as they partnered with Nigerian Labour Congress and so on, but it, it, it was one of the most significant protests within Nigerian contemporary history because the mileage that platforms like Nairaland, Facebook, and Twitter, and the conversations that morphed from the so-called on, online um, slackism to real-life effects. And precisely because of that, they were, the, the spread and scope of Occupy Nigeria protests took the then government by storm. It was no longer business as usual. You now run down the little bit to the intergenerational differences between the millennials that pushed the Occupy Nigerian protests, of course, with the um, also the the pitfalls therein, to the Gen Zs that um, that inspired the ANSAS protests. You can you could also see a total generational approach from digital natives. When it comes to the Gen Z, they were more outspoken. They tried as much as possible, and to their credit, avoided the pitfalls that had characterized Nigerians' political landscape and which was unfortunately one of the, um, you could say, the death knell for occupying Nigeria, which is allowing politicians and ethnic um, fault lines and religious fault lines to divide the narrative. That was what happened with Occupy Nigeria. For instance, that the, the, the young people will sue idealistic and they did not realize that politicians have launched and taken over their movement. Come down to the answers, the, these young fellows were much more intelligent. They did not allow that to happen. As a matter of fact, they did something that was quite unique, a horizontal form of leadership, which meant that no one single person you could say, was in charge of ANSAS protests. Yes, you had significant orders. Fowles, Aisha Mohammed, the Feminist Coalition, and Mr. Macaroni, and many others, influential, Wuni, for instance. Yeah, they were influential orders, but none of them, personally, was the leader of ANSAS. So that was one. With that, they, um, they were able to sidestep Nigerians very, very volatile ethnic and political landscape. Secondly, precisely because they made Twitter the HQ, so to speak, of the conversations, 
decisions we are taking such of, I mean, in sort of a confederal um, council in which everyone supposedly had a say. And that's why they were able to um, stomp out, for instance, the initial, there was once there was a, a conversation about having a meeting with the government. They were able to stomp it down, stopped it out. But also the influence that um, using that same platform for coordination, health, legal um, coordination, raising mobilization, and so on and so forth. You could also say that the fact that then Twitter under Jack, um, the founder, and Jack Dozy was able to create a special emoji for help to aggregate the hashtag in such a way that it gained um, considerable global mileage at a very short time. The reason of money as well that the um, Twitter founder then helped in cryptocurrency, which took it obviously outside the grip of government, even when the then government decided to start shutting down their accounts and freezing their accounts off. So it's, it's something that's, and that's why I insisted at the beginning that it did not influence. It's a story about how it enabled and catalyzed a protest beyond the reach of, of um, the usual tensions that social movements have. Of course, there are very there are negative implications of um, of using these two media for movements because to start with, um, in as much as these two media, it's very important and and has done a lot in the early mobilization execution of movements, but for movements to be important and significant over time, there has to be an evolution. And I think that that was one of the major pitfalls of the NSAS protest. Nice Twitter mobilization following up on um, victims and so on and so forth. But the last four stages, or there are four stages of movement, NSAS could not outgrow the first stage. Movements become strong, reliable, dependable when they get to the first stage of bureaucratization. NSAS did very well in the first stage of first steps of social movement, but the, it was not able to arrive at the bureaucratization stage, so to speak. And, it's, and that's why, and the reason why they could not negotiate with the establishment. Social movements, is not just an, um, does not just stop at we are the good guys and these are the bad guys. And it's something that comes with the digital culture as well. We are the good guys. The other people within the, at the other aisle are the bad guys. But for you to um, be able to push for significant change, there has to be a sort of handshake, sort of in which you negotiate. And that was one of the pitfalls of answers. So idealistic. And you give a concrete, I'll give a concrete example. Um, and, it's, and this goes again from the digital culture that um, social media really propagates. Anybody that, um, so to speak, that any digital migrant that has lived under and military government knows that a call a a declaration of um, a curfew knows what it means. But you see that the Gen Zs we are so idealistic. A curfew under military dictatorship means shoot at sight. Granted, Nigeria is a democratic state. Granted, the institutions should protest, should protect um, young and defenseless citizens. Granted, all these that, after all, what are they protesting against? They are citizens within their countries and it's within their fundamental human rights. But the digital culture in which that canonizes 
the netizens without really understanding the depth and the privity and the extent that the establishment can go needs to negotiate their identity. And of course, precisely because of that, as unfortunate as it was, not only were there um, kingings after the curfew, but also what Afalonia explains as the Hogigan and the spread of Hogigagism, which in order to dent the image, dent the message, there was a rhetoric that was unleashed on answers. But it has always been the tyrant manual of Nigerian governments from independence till now. A social movement raises up some, an issue. Rather than face the issue, they either try to discredit that movement or to distort their message by infliction, uh, by, of, um, more, as it were, you know, um, creating violence and blaming the movement. So it's part of where this digital culture sort of the negative consequence because negative consequence is that all this part of history we are somehow neglected and especially in the answers and all this should have easily been assessed if also they had that you know um, that humility and less of hubris to have consulted the die hard die in the wool um activists that have gone through all this so is a is a is a combination of this the still bed of a movement at the same time who breathes that somehow prevented them from really achieving their potential and these are part of the consequences of um, these two media that promotes a lot of individualism and i better pass my neighbor mentality